Welcome back to Just Campers Project 2022. So in this part, I'm gonna show you how to install windows. So I'm gonna show you how to cut the material out, how to fit the beading, and how to bond the glass. And more importantly, how to measure up first. I'm gonna run through everything we need to fit our windows. Our side sliding windows, our rear tailgate windows, and our cover up window. First thing we need is a drill, a three mil drill bit, and an eight mil drill bit. A jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, our angle grinder with a thin slitting disc and a soft pad or flapper wheel for cleaning up afterwards. Scotch Bright, this dulls the paint off to allow our primer bond to adhere correctly to the paintwork. We have two different sizes of trim. We have a smaller trim for the rear tailgate and we have a wider trim which is used for all of our side windows. Glass primer wipe, our bond and our primer and a primer applicator. Now when you're fitting the windows you'll need at least a whole set of that per window. So we'll need glass primer, our bond, our primer and our applicator per glass. So if you're fitting five different glasses you'll need five sets of bond and primer. Mastic gun to apply our bond and our suction cups to hold our glass in position. So the first part that we need to do is decide which part we're cutting out. It's really easy actually, because this lip here that goes all the way around is our template for cutting out. So we can draw a line all the way around and use this as our guide. And we're gonna draw a line across here. We can use a ruler and just a straight edge and just basically cut out that same. I like to use a pen just so I know where I'm going. Now I'm going to show you how to cut this panel out. Using tools you should or probably have at home. So we're going to be using a drill, a jigsaw, and the angle grinder that we used before to cut out the lip from the bulkhead. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the corners, because we're going to drill through and be able to get our, we need that, that hole to be able to get our jigsaw through. So the first thing we do, we, we get our drill. This is an eight mil drill bit. I'm going to put the drill bit along on the flat and literally just draw around it. And the same here, before it starts on the corner, I'm gonna draw around it. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna mark the center of that. Mark the center of that. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a pilot drill through that first, and then our eight mil drill. I'll show you. If you haven't used one before, it's a good idea to use a small pilot drill bit. This is a three mil drill bit. Um, ideal to start a hole first with this, and then we'll move up to our larger drill bit afterwards. So we're going to use it and put it on our spot that we've marked, which is roughly our centre of our 8mm. That takes us through, do the other one too. Okay, so the reason we drilled a pilot hole is to make it easier with your 8mm drill bit. So this is an 8mm drill bit now, we're going to go through using our pilot hole. So we literally place the drill onto the pilot hole. Okay, it's one hole. We've got our eight holes drilled in the corners. This is gonna allow us to get our jigsaw into the panel and cut the corners out. But first, before we do that, we're gonna make a template from the inside to transfer it to the outside. And I'll show you why. Let me slot this into the corner. We end up with our corner. We're gonna cut that out and then we can transfer that to the outside because our jigsawing we're probably gonna do from the outside to make it easier. Okay, so we've got our cardboard template. We're gonna line it up with the holes that we've drilled on the edges. And then using our pen, quite simply, a bit of radius on the corner. Doesn't have to be perfect, but there we go. So that's our line we're gonna follow with our jigsaw when we come to cutting the corners out. So I'm gonna do that for the other three. Okay, so what we are gonna do, we're gonna remove these burrs. Um, obviously where we've drilled through with our eight mil, we've left a few burrs. So you can do that by using a, a bigger drill bit. This is a 13 mil drill bit. We just really gently, just take the burrs off, the worst of them. Because obviously we're gonna be masking up the van in a minute and we don't wanna be catching our fingers on that. 
Okay, so now we've drilled our holes and we've drawn our radius on for our jigsaw to follow. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna mask up the outside of the van and then we're gonna mask up the outside of the van with some cardboard and we're gonna be cutting from the inside. The reason we're gonna be putting a cardboard on the outside is to contain the mess that the angle grinder makes. And we're gonna keep that within a box that we're gonna to make to put on the side. Okay, so that's the masking tape done. Next step is to get some cardboard and we're gonna make ourselves a cardboard box to collect all the debris that we're gonna have from cutting from inside. We measured up for our cardboard that we're gonna place over the panel. Now the reason we're doing this is to try and contain all of the uh, grinding parts that are coming off when we're cutting and the metal filings. And it stops it going into the paintwork and ruining the paintwork. So we literally, I've measured it, so hopefully we're the right size. Yeah, it's pretty good. So that's gonna sit up upon, up on these ridges and give us a little bit of space. That space will be enough space for our cutting disc to come through from the other side. So we're literally gonna take it in place. Okay, that should contain all the rubbish we get from when we cut from inside. Let's go and start cutting. We're gonna cut, and we're gonna cut from hole to hole on a, in a straight line. Now using our slitting disc with our angle grinder, we're gonna keep our grinder really straight and steady and go really, really slowly. Um, and let the grinder do the work. And once we've cut through the panel, then we're gonna keep moving along. Using this edge as a guide until we get to the center, then we'll have to use our pen line as our guide to cut through. And we don't wanna be pushing the grinder all the way through because we'll cut our cardboard off. So we're literally just cutting through. Once we're through edge to edge, and then we'll go up and down and across the top, and then we'll cut the corners last. And obviously, using the grinder, make sure you have your safety equipment, so you do need something for your face, something for your eyes, gloves, and of course, something for your ears to protect them. Okay, now we've cut with our grinder inside, all of our debris should be contained behind this cardboard. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let the cardboard down, hoover up the debris, and then we're gonna get ready to jigsaw the corners out. Okay, so we're gonna cut the corners out with our jigsaw. We've got plenty of tape on the vehicle, uh, again, because we don't wanna damage our bodywork. I've also put tape on the feet of our jigsaw, again, just to help us, to stop us damaging the paintwork. Um, we're gonna cut round with the jigsaw, this is why our 8mm holes are there, so we can actually start with the blade inside the vehicle. So we need to be very careful when we're doing so. Well, let's go. That's our panel cut out. We've cut the last corners out with the jigsaw. Now we need to put our cardboard back up and then we're gonna grind the edges and make the edges nice and smooth. Okay, now we've cut the hole out. So we've reboarded and remasked on the outside. We're gonna use our grinding disc, flapper wheel, and we're gonna remove our rough edges from the inside. Okay, so we just need to take care with our flapper type wheel when grinding. Uh, and just take our time, because we're going to have to do the corners as well, so we're going to be very, very gentle with moving around the corners to take off our sharp edges. So we've, we've cut our window hole out, we've gone round and ground off all our sharp edges. Now all we need to do is just paint the bare edges. So we're gonna use a direct to metal paint, literally just to paint on the bare edge to prevent corrosion. Okay, so we're getting ready to cut out our hole for the window on the sliding door. Um, first thing we need to do is remove our release handle. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. 
that's just a T30 screwdriver again, um, with two T30 screws located behind the handle. So that allows us to move the handle out of the way, and we're to probably take that out of the way so we don't damage it when we cut. Okay, now we've drilled our eight, eight mil holes coming through. As you can see, they're burred up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna deburr them with a slightly larger drill. This is a 13 mil drill, and we just take the burrs off, because when we're working on this side, we don't wanna be cutting our fingers. Okay, so what I've done, I've made a template for the corners. Basically, all I've done is put it up against our door and cut round it so we get the right contour. Now, I'm gonna transfer that to the outside, which will aid us in our cutting with our jigsaw later. Okay, so as this is a sliding door, um, this part of it's not gonna get carpet lined. So again, we need to protect this paint when we're using our cutting tool. Um, so again, our friend the masking tape, we're gonna mask up that all the way around and then we'll get ready to cut. Okay, effectively, that's our box taped on. Now we've got a gap at the end. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that up as well. But that gap is enough gap for us to get our cutting tool in from the inside. Okay, we're ready to cut. Okay, now we've cut from the inside, we're gonna take our cardboard down and we can vacuum up our debris that we've got left over. Okay, so I've placed some reinforced cloth tape from the, from the roof of the van onto the panel that we're cutting out. This just helps control as we cut through with our jigsaw, but then the panel doesn't fall through onto us, so we can just gently let it down inside. Also, what we're gonna do is, as we're using a jigsaw, I'm gonna use a little bit more masking tape for protection on the paintwork. So now I've placed some masking tape on the feet of the jigsaw, again, just to protect the paintwork as we come around the corner. We don't wanna damage the paintwork here. Um, so off we go, we're gonna start by cutting both lower corners first and then cut the uppers last. The reason being that we want the panel to swing and fall inside the car, not outside the vehicle. Okay, now we've cut our hole out for our window. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cover up again with our um, cardboard for masking and then we're gonna grind from the inside to get our edges nice and smooth. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've masked back up with our cardboard on the outside to protect the paintwork on the outside. We've still got our masking tape on the inside again to protect from our, our paintwork on the inside. Now we're gonna use our soft pad grinder or flapper wheel type grinder, uh, basically to smooth the edge up all the way around and neaten up the corners and neaten up our, our grinding cuts. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we've finished cutting our hole out for our window on our sliding door. We've removed our cardboard masking and we've tidied up. Now, all we've got left to do is paint the bare edge. So we're gonna use a direct to metal paint, literally just to paint on the bare edge to prevent corrosion. So literally just apply a very small amount of paint to the very bare edge. Again, we don't want it all running down the paintwork. Okay, so we're gonna cut the hole for our rear quarter window. Again, much the same as we've done before. So now we've, we've cut our window hole out, we've removed our masking. Um, if you do have some little tiny edges left, 
You can if you want, and if you have a hand file at home, just use a hand file. Obviously, make sure you keep hold of both ends so you don't slip and hit the paintwork. But the idea is just literally run it round to remove the last of the edge. And that's it. Okay, so we're going to get ready to cut our tailgate hole out, ready for our tailgate glass. So much the same thing. We're going to go around with our marker pen so we can see our line all the way around. And then for the corners, we're going to jigsaw. So we do the same thing with our drill bit. Okay, then when we get to the corners, again, we're going to go along till our corner starts. Stop just before the corner, draw around our drill bit. Then once we've done that, again, we're going to spot the centre roughly, and then we'll drill through that with our three mil drill. Okay, so we've drilled all of our pilot holes, really in the corners. We're going to go through with our eight mil drill bit now, and that will allow us to put our jigsaw blade in from the other side to cut the corners. We've got some very sharp burrs left, so what we're going to do is very gently deburr all of those holes so we don't hurt our fingers when we're masking up. Okay, so what we're going to do now we have our holes drilled, the next thing for us to do is to mask up. We're going to mask up with masking tape and cardboard. Okay, so I've made these templates for us to put our corners on the outside so we know where we're cutting. Um, I've simply done that by taking the profile from the inside and then we literally just draw around it on the outside. So here's one that says top. So that'll do both sides on the top. Another one for the bottom because the profiles are slightly different. So we've done this side. Okay, so we've masked up our outside with our cardboard masking. And we've also masked up inside as well because if you're not carpet lining or covering this uh, area here, then you could damage your paintwork. So the best thing to do is obviously tape up with the masking tape. And then when you cut, we're not gonna damage the paintwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut from corner to corner and side to side. And then we'll do our cuts on the corners last outside with our jigsaw. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, cut the corners. We've also made sure I have a bit of masking tape on the feet of our jigsaw just to protect the paintwork. To finish off our hole, all we need to do now is put our masking board back over the top and grind from the inside to make the edges smooth. So we've cut all the holes out for our windows. Uh, we've cleaned up all the edges and now we've painted all the bare edges with a director metal paint as well just to stop corrosion. We've obviously we've cleaned the van thoroughly as well so we've hoovered up all our debris from our cutting and our grinding, removed all our masking and now we're ready to fit the trim. Okay for our side windows and our sliding door window we've used this size U-channel trim to go over both parts of the door aperture or the side window apertures um, but for the rear for the tailgate we're going to use a slightly different trim. This is still a U-section trim, but it's a lot smaller. What this allows us to do is have more room for bonding glue on the outside. Hence why we're using the smaller one. Okay, so this is our U-section trim. Now this U-section trim is going to push over both parts of the aperture. So we've got the outer skin and the inner skin. This fits over both. So we're going to start some roughly in the middle. So I'm going to put the, the trim over both sections and push down. Doesn't need a lot of pressure, it will go down quite nicely. The only places we might need a hammer is in the corners, just to make sure that it's in the corner before we go up. So we'll just give it a Actually, it sounds, it sounds pretty solid anyway, that's good. Then when we get back to the middle, we're just gonna snip that with a pair of snips and join it back up. So we're just gonna mark with a pen where we're gonna join. So now the trim is fitted, we're gonna go ahead and fit the trims to all the other windows. Okay, so on the trim that we're fitting to the sliding door, um, the handle for the opening of the sliding door will need to be loosened off to allow us a little bit of moon, room to be able to get this trim behind that part of the handle first. So we go ahead with our T30. And it comes forward enough to allow us to get that trim between the handle 
and the door frame. And then we can do our handle back up again. As you can see, using the trim that's too large doesn't allow us enough space for um, the glue for bonding our screen together. Obviously we need a certain amount of, of area for our glue to take to. Um, with the smaller trim, that's what we have. We've got a good finger line of glue that we can put in there. Now we have our seal trims fitted to all our windows, the rear windows and all the side windows. Our next step is on our glue line, uh, we're going to take Scotch-Brite and what we're going to do, we're going to take literally take the shine off the paintwork. Um, obviously you have to be really careful we don't touch the, the body of the car anywhere else. If you want you can mask and tape up if you're not comfortable. But what we want to do is take the shine away from the paint which allows us a keying surface for our primer to, to key into and allow to really stick well when we put our glue on. So literally all we're going to do is take our Scotch-Brite and literally rough up that area. And we do that all the way around. Okay, so we're getting ready to fit our tailgate glass. First thing we do is get it out of our packaging and we check for any damage on the glass. We don't want to be fitting it and then find damage afterwards. The other thing we do is install our suckers. Basically, we put these onto the glass so we can lift and maneuver our glass. Uh, these are available from Just Campers, extremely handy. If you haven't got a trestle to put it on, as long as you have uh, a reasonable sized table or the right high surface, be fine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned and ready to prime. So I'm gonna turn this over. So the first thing we need to do is clean this edge all the way around and then put our special glass adhesive primer on. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is degrease the area. So we have our special cleaning wipes. Now we're just cleaning the edge because this is the edge where we'll be putting the primer. So we wanna make sure that's clean for the primer to adhere to. Also, we can now run that around the car and make sure our car is fully degreased to put the primer on as well. It's always a good idea to hold the glass up to the vehicle and do a dry fit first without any glue, without any primer, and just make sure it sits flat. We've already done this. Um, we haven't got any issues with our trim holding the glass off. Sometimes if the trim protrudes a bit too much, it will hold the glass off the body. So all you need to do is use your rubber mallet and tap the trim down. Um, we've checked that, everything's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime. This is our primer. This helps the bond adhere to the glass and the painted surface of the vehicle. So we basically put it in and then carefully run the primer around where our glue is going to go. I'm just gonna do a double thickness line here just to make sure I'm in the same vicinity as the glass, as the, the bond when we put it onto the vehicle. So we can't get that wrong. Okay, so now we're gonna take our primer onto the vehicle, onto the body. Again, taking care not to use too much. Um, again, I've used the masking tape uh, to prevent us getting this on the paintwork where we don't want it. So literally, I'm going to come down. Okay, so our next step after we've allowed our primer to go touch dry is to use our bonding agent. This is a self-curing bonding adhesive for glass, specifically for glass. Um, we apply it with just a mastic gun. It's a good idea to warm this tube up so you can warm it up in some hot water um, and that allows the, the glue to flow a lot easier using one of these guns. And we're gonna apply it directly to our body of our vehicle all the way around. Um, we're gonna start on the lower in the middle. And we're gently gonna go all the way around. Now, the applicator's got a V cut out of it. And we wanna stand that up so as we apply the glue, we're leaving a V-shaped glue all the way around and that allows us to when we stick our glass on, it will then widen out and uh, adhere properly to the glass. Just apply a nice steady rate. Keep going, we want a continuous bead of sealer. If you have to stop for any reason, you can do, it's fine. You can squidge it back together. We apply our sealer directly to our primer. And join your sealer back up. You check your sealer, make sure it's nice and even all the way around and you haven't got any gaps. If you've got gaps, now the time is to put a little bit in, if need be. 
Okay, now we're gonna uh, fit the glass. So we gently put our glass into position. We've already done a dry fit, so we know it fits great. I've got my friend Nick to help me because this is a big piece of glass, so we wanna try and get it right first time. So we're gonna go to the upper edge first, and just basically line it up with the body. You okay, Nick? Yep. Okay, then push the top on, and then just follow around till the bottom goes on, and then place it in the middle. Okay, so we've got our glass in place with the adhesive in place. What we've used is some cloth reinforced tape again just to hold it in place. Once we've got it moved and got it central, we'll place the tape on. We'll leave that to cure for a day. It will go start activating and going off within an hour or two, but I wouldn't recommend driving for at least a day. Okay, again, so we've taken our side rear glass out and inspected it, and we've fitted our suction pads to the other side and inverted it. So now we're gonna go around and clean the outside of it before we use our primer. So we're ready to um, apply our adhesive. Uh, I will say you need to use one of these tubes per glass because they do go off very quickly. So we've, we've, by the time we've tubed it on, it's already starting to skin over. So then that part half tube, used tube, will be no good. So we throw that away, discard that. Um, also, you probably noticed I'm wearing gloves. It's a good idea too because this stuff sticks to your skin and uh, you'd have to grow it off. It doesn't wash off very well. I'm gonna use our triangle cut on that side to leave a nice edge. And we're gonna go and apply all the way around again on the primer. Just take your time, you have got enough time, plenty of time for the glue to stay wet. Okay, so we're ready to install our glass. The glue's on, it's ready. I've also installed uh, a couple of pieces of cloth reinforced tape. So once I get the glass up there, I can then basically hold it in place with the tape. The glue will hold it initially, but we just then we can move it around and get it perfect. And especially if you're doing it on your own, always try and make sure I've got a bit of tape ready to go onto the glass. Just makes life a bit easier. Okay, again, we're gonna move it up to the top first, leaving the bottom away um, so we can just marry that corner up of the glass with the body. And then just gently touch down onto our glue. And then we'll bring the rest of it down. And then we're just gonna gently push. So we've got all the glue on the glass. I'm gonna go forward actually there. Okay. So we want quite a nice even gap all the way around again. So check your gap at the back, check your gap underneath, and also along the top. The reason I say it is obviously we want the next bit of glass to match up with this bit of glass. If we've got a nice even gap, it'd be easy to move. Hold my top, stop it sliding. Same this side. That's good. Okay, I'm just using a bit of masking tape as well. Literally just to try and hold it in place while our, while our glue cures off. It is actually stuck fairly firm in about an hour, but I would not advise driving for at least 24. And that's our side rear window done. Okay, so now we're ready to fit our sliding door glass. One thing to note on this glass is that it has drains for the sliding window. These are water drains. There's one each side. Now we must take care that when we put the sealer onto the vehicle, we don't put it on too heavy. We don't want the sealer oozing over and blocking up the vents for the water to flow out of. So we just take note when we put our bottom line along, we don't have to go too heavy. As you can see, I've placed a little bit of masking tape here, and this is a dry fit, so the window's in and then just held on with a little bit of cloth tape. The reason why is because I'm gonna show you uh, how and where to put the primer on this window. Um, so we're gonna mark it from the inside to just give us an indication of where we should be putting our primer. But I'll explain as soon as we get in and do that. Okay, so our window's held in with our tape from the outside. If you're not 100% happy with that, you can always get your friend or your mate to hold the glass from the outside. Now, I've just literally got a, a pencil with a reasonably sharp point. All I'm gonna do is gonna go around and mark just above our seal, all the way around our glass. Okay, so you can see uh, we've got our pencil line that we've made from having the window dry fitted on the van. 
And this just helps to give us an indication of where to put our primer. Okay, and also we have the seal on the van as well. We need to take that into consideration. So our pencil line and our seal, then we would be applying our primer this side of that seal all the way around. So it would leave a, a gap of probably 15 mil all the way around. And it just makes sure that we've got our primer in the right place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, degrease our window, degrease our vehicle, and then get ready to apply our bond and uh, fit this sliding window. Okay, so as a guide, we, we've done our pencil line and we're gonna use our seal that we've obviously fitted to our vehicle. I'm just gonna make a little pencil mark this side of the seal. And that basically shows me the gap that I need to leave with my primer all the way around. Okay, so we're gonna prime for our glass on the vehicle. Again, keeping it close to our seal, so then we match up with our primer marking on our glass. Okay, so sufficient primer for our glass to adhere to. The other thing we're gonna do is, <clears throat> I'm just gonna increase our primer width across here. And the reason I'm doing that is because where the two pieces of glass butt up, there will be a gap, and you will see the paint color come through. So we can use our black primer to disguise that, hence why I've used a little bit of masking tape top and bottom, and we're literally just gonna fill that center strip with our black primer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, apply our bonding adhesive. Uh, it's a really good idea to keep these in your house overnight, so at room temperature when you use them. Uh, the colder this glue is, the much more difficult it is to get it out of the gun. Uh, the warmer it is, obviously the easier it flows. Uh, you can even warm them up before you open them and stand them in some hot water for a little while just to absorb some heat. Uh, and then the things, it becomes a lot more liquid and easier to apply. So again, on this lower window, we're keeping our bond as close to our seal as possible. And that enables to make sure that the, the glue doesn't cover up our drain seal, our drain tubes on our glass. Okay, so that's our line of glue, uh, adhesive all the way around. So it's a good time to check it now, make sure we haven't got any breaks, any lows, or any open parts. If we have, we can correct that now. It all looks good, so I think we're ready to um, fit our glass. Okay, so we're ready to place our glass onto our glue. Again, we're gonna put the top edge on first, just so we can hope we can sort of see the location a bit better. So we're gonna go up to that corner. Okay, once the top's somewhere closely located, we're gonna push on the glue. That's it. Same again, I've uh, used a little bit of cloth reinforced tape up the top, so once I get the glass held in position, I can drop the tape down, and it just aids keeping the glass steady. And we can move it around and get it to line up with our rear glass. So let's have a go. Okay, much the same as before, we're gonna put the top up first, so we're gonna copy our line on our vehicle. Get the glass in, and then once the top touches the glue, just gently, let the rest of it come down. Okay, now we can start moving it around and get it to line up with our rear glass. And at the moment, obviously, you can see the grey paint through. There is a bit of trim that we can put in behind to get rid of that grey, or you can simply open the door and just paint a black line behind there if you prefer. But it is really down to personal taste. Okay, so we're going to be fitting our last side window. Now this window is obviously going over a panel because we're having a unit fitted on the inside so we don't need a see-through glass here. So the glass we're fitting on here is 100% tinted so you can't see through it. Literally uh, we're going to run our glue line all the way around the outside as normal. I'm going to put our primer on first. Uh, and then the other thing to mention when we're applying the glue we're going to leave a gap at the bottom of about an inch. The reason for this is that the air inside the glass can heat up and can shatter the glass if you don't leave an air gap. We have to apply quite a heavy amount of glue on this, this glass. Reason being that it hasn't got a trim to sit on. So we're gonna build it up with glue to get it level with this glass. Okay, so the purposes, for the purposes of fitting this rear window, um, obviously because it's a fixed window, we haven't got an aperture to line up with. So I've already gone ahead and applied our primer. Now I'm gonna measure our primer roughly to see where it is and get the prime. The important thing is to make sure we've got the primer in the correct place on the glass that we're fitting. And again, it doesn't matter if we go a very wide band on that glass because we can't see through it anyway. 
But again, we need to make sure we're in the realms of where the glue is. So I'm gonna to measure to our swage line, roughly, okay, so it's roughly five centimeters to the center, pretty much all the way along. Yep. So we're pretty consistent. We've got a five centimeter gap pretty much all the way around. Okay, so that gives us a guide for putting the primer on our fixed glass. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clean our glass as normal. We've obviously checked for damage and make sure we haven't got any scratches or chips on this glass. I'll obviously do that before you uh, stick it to the vehicle. Okay, so with this uh, glass, as I said, we've already measured the vehicle to see where our primer line is, and we know roughly five centimeters in. So again, roughly five centimeters in from our edge of our glass, I'm just gonna put a little pencil line. And that's basically where I'm gonna start our primer line all the way around and then make it thicker towards the inside. And then I know for sure that I'm gonna be on the glue line with our primer. Okay, so now we have a very wide band of primer, but we know for sure we're gonna be within our glue line on our vehicle. Okay, so we're gonna apply our glue to our primed area. This is for our um, cover-up glass. Now, as I said before, we're gonna to have to try and make this glue as big as possible to line up with our glass here because we haven't got a seal to be sitting on, whereas this one has, so it's already raised away from the vehicle. So, and we're also gonna leave a gap at the bottom uh, that's our air gap to prevent the glass from building up pressure and breaking. Does look like a lot of glue, but it will help our glass stand off and match up with our front window. And that's it, and then we're gonna leave our gap there. That's our air gap. So again, the same deal, we're gonna put the top edge up first. And hold it off so we can marry it up with our body line at the top and just gently touch down onto the bond. I can feel we're on the bond now. Okay, so we are now gonna move it around and get it to level up with what we've got. A little bit of pressure. As you can see, it's just leveling up nicely. That's all aided by that extra amount of glue that we've used. And that's the last piece of our glass fitted. With all your windows fitted, you'll notice it makes a massive difference. It really brings the light inside the van. So we've gone from just a, a plain old panel van to a, a really good start for our camper van conversion. Make sure you follow us to see the progress of Project 2022.